Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 24th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, one class of attacks that has caused a lot of headlines in the last couple of years are hardware bugs in memory, like for example, Rowhammer or most recently Rambleed. In addition to some of the CPU vulnerabilities like Spectre, the effect here is that a non-privileged user on a system may be able to read memory they're not supposed to have access to. And of course, uh, one preferred target of uh, these attacks is encryption keys. And for example, in the Rampleet attack that just came out recently, one of the proof of concept exploits did extract private keys from memory. The real question is, well, how do we protect ourselves from these attacks. One option, of course, is to encrypt these private keys. And private keys are often encrypted on hard disks, and then the user has to type in a passphrase in order to use the particular key, or they're kept in a secure enclave. But once they're in memory, things get a little bit more tricky. Well, uh, there is now a patch for OpenSSH that does just that. OpenSSH contributor Damian Miller released a patch for OpenSSH that will encrypt these private keys while they're not in use. Of course, the next question is then, well, how are they encrypted? Because if you're just using a symmetric key again to encrypt these keys, well, uh, then this encrypted key is again at risk. But that's exactly what this patch is doing. This patch creates a 16 kilobyte long random key that is then used to encrypt this private ZH key. So you're probably asking, well, how is it any better? Well, the trick here is that all of these hardware flaws, uh, well, exploits for them aren't perfect. Whenever they are reading memory, there's a certain error rate of that memory. Now, for these relatively short uh, SH private keys, the error rate is acceptable. You may have a couple bad bits there, but essentially you could always then brute force these remaining bits. With 16 kilobytes of of data being used to encrypt the key, the error rate is too large in order to read back this 16 kilobyte key and get a key that's more usable than what you would get if you would just brute force the original SSH key. So at least until someone is coming out with a better ramp lead or a better row hammer attack that has a lower error rate, well, uh, this sounds like a pretty interesting solution. We'll have to see if other software is adopting a similar approach. It looks like all the warnings about patching the blue keep vulnerability do have some effect. We do have some number from Raviv Tamir. Now, Raviv works for Microsoft Threat Protection, so he has some insight into what Microsoft Enterprise customers are doing, and the patch rate that he's seeing now is up to 83.4%. So we've got about 14% of systems still to go. Not uh, perfect, uh, but for what usually happens with patches like this, this is actually a pretty good patch rate. These are not necessarily exposed systems, so there is very much a chance that the remaining 14% that many of these systems are not directly exposed and less likely going to get affected by any kind of exploit. I haven't seen any updated numbers from Robert Graham, who originally did a scan of uh, systems with RDP exposed and who were vulnerable. And a few weeks back, he came up with about a million systems. And Trend Micro is reporting that they're seeing another botnet that is going after Android systems and trying to install crypto coin miners. In this particular case, they're using the Android debug bridge that's 
port 5555. We've actually seen a little bit of an uptick in scanning for this port recently, which may be related. They are also trying to use SSH. Neither one of these services are actually typically sort of enabled on Android. In the past, it has really been more of the TV sticks that are running Androids that were vulnerable here and not so much the mobile phones that you usually associate with Android. Well, and this is it for today. I may have no podcast uh, this week on Thursday due to my travel schedule. Still trying to work out some of the details here. But uh, anyway, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.